Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, in, in uh, yours, and uh, good evening to everyone from uh, India. Thank you, brother Uman, for uh, the uh, the wonderful introduction, and uh, thank you, Carrie, for the wonderful song. I really enjoyed the song. I am uh, that uh, this morning is blessed with that song. Thank you very much. So, uh, as it was announced today, we will be talking a little bit about uh, Christmas. So, uh, last day, uh, not yesterday, actually day before yesterday, my daughter, uh, daughter Evangeline, uh, we call her Eva, uh, she was so excited, she was not uh, sleeping, uh, it was uh, almost 12 at night and uh, she was so excited and she was saying, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm, uh, repeatedly she's saying, I'm happy. And we asked her, what happened, why are you so happy? Then she's like, it's Christmas. I'm happy. I don't know uh, whether she she's only three years old. Uh, she just turned three last month, November 23rd. I don't think that uh, she understand what is Christmas, the significance of Christmas, but still she is very happy and uh, she's excited about Christmas. And I'm sure that all of us attending this meeting, uh, we are excited about Christmas. And that brings one question, what is Christmas? Why, why is it so significant? Is it just like any other, we have a lot of, uh, some time back we were talking about Halloween. Uh, is it just like uh, Halloween or we have a, a thousand other uh, festivals and uh, different uh, seasons? So is it something like that? Or what is uh, Christmas? So when we uh, think about Christmas, uh, I think everyone in the world, without doubt, they can tell that uh, Christmas is the celebration of birthday of Jesus Christ. So uh, it's significant, at least uh, for uh, Christians, it is significant. And others, non-Christians, uh, respect and celebrate uh, Christmas along with the Christian. So uh, people, everyone is excited about uh, Christmas. And uh, I told it is the celebration of the birthday of uh, Jesus Christ. So we all usually, in most of the countries, we celebrate Christmas on December 25th. And some countries, even today, they celebrate uh, Christmas on uh, January 6th. But uh, all, all over the world, most of the people uh, celebrate Christmas on uh, December 25th. Now the question is, is December 25th the birthday of Jesus Christ? And the one word answer would be no. It is, uh, we don't have any uh, clear evidence to say that uh, the birthday of Jesus Christ was on uh, December 25. We celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ on December 25, but the evidences, we don't have any proper evidence. And uh, if we check the, uh, the church history, the early writings of uh, church fathers, there is no mentioning about uh, uh, Christmas celebration in early Christian writings. We have a lot of uh, bishops like uh, Irenaeus, Tertullian, uh, uh, Oregon. None of them wrote about the celebration of the birthday of Jesus Christ. And in the history, one of the first writing we see, the earliest writing we see about the celebration of Christmas is around AD 400 by Augustine of Hippo. And many scholars, even though uh, uh, there are a lot of people don't agree with that, uh, many scholars and historians say that uh, uh, the celebration of Christmas uh, started uh, when Con uh, Emperor Constantine became a Christian. He was an uh, emperor, and uh, uh, in one war, he was uh, uh, struggling to uh, win the war. And one night, he uh, dreamt about a uh, he dreamt a cross, and uh, he he knew that cross uh, represents uh, Christ and Christians. And he was converted to Christian. He won the war, and he accepted Christianity as his religion. Many people today they uh, say that Christianity became the state religion of uh, Emperor Constantine, but uh, history uh, doesn't agree with that. Uh, according to history, 
he gave uh, the freedom of religion he accepted christianity and he gave the freedom of religion so his uh, country became his kingdom became a secular uh, uh, country but many people say that after he became a christian one of the pagan uh, uh, festival was uh, converted to uh, christmas and it is uh, celebrated on december 25th and uh, if we calculate uh, some uh, some people say that uh, if we calculate based on the birth of john the baptist and the birth of jesus christ and uh, uh, if we calculate the the life events in uh, the father of john the baptist uh, we can understand that uh, the birth of uh, jesus christ would be around in uh, october we cannot conclusively say that but uh, some people uh, calculate in that way anyway uh, we celebrate christmas on december 25th and uh, it doesn't matter whether that is the right day or not what matters is christ was born and christ was born for us that's the significant thing in, in our uh, in our life so uh, no matter whether christ was born on december 25th or uh, not we celebrate uh the birthday of christ and we uh, we celebrate uh, the birth of jesus christ now another question when we talk about the history and uh, uh, whether christ was uh, uh, born on december 25th or not another question many people ask especially the skeptics uh, people who don't believe in um, uh, god and people who are against uh, uh, god uh, against christianity uh, there is questions about the historicity of jesus christ is jesus christ a historic person or a hoax uh, there are so many books written that uh, jesus christ is just a hoax he was not a, he was a imaginary uh, character even in in my mother tongue in my uh, in malayalam there is a uh, book written by one of the atheist uh, his name was joseph idamarug um, he, the name of his book is um, jesus and krishna the krishna as you know is uh, one of the hindu god uh, christ and krishna uh, they are not real so uh, many people uh questions the historicity of uh, jesus christ but if you uh, really without any bias if we uh, look into history we have more than enough uh, evidence to believe that he, jesus christ is a historic person we have more uh, evidence than any other historic person to prove the existence of jesus christ uh um a couple of weeks ago carry uh, spoke about the, some of the manuscripts of bible and she told that there are uh, she made a comparison between uh, some of the other early literature and bible and when we look into the manuscripts of bible we have uh, like 100 or 1000 times uh, more manuscripts than any other uh, ancient books and uh that's why one of the uh, uh new testament scholar uh, a manuscript scholar his name is daniel wallace he always say that we have the uh, abundance of evidence we have more evidence than any other uh, books uh, in the ancient world and in the new testament there are four historians four historians matthew mark luke and john these four people wrote about jesus christ they they saw jesus christ they lived with jesus christ they saw the uh, the mighty works of jesus christ uh, they uh, walked uh, ate and slept with jesus christ and they wrote about uh, jesus christ we have written evidence by these four historians the disciples of uh, jesus christ who wrote the history of uh jesus christ that is uh, we call it uh the gospel and sometimes people say that they are just uh they were christians they were early christians and they just made up a story they all sat together and wrote a story and these four gospels are just a story or fairy tale by uh these four people so we cannot accept them even if we uh, uh, uh accept that argument if we say that okay 
they are christian so we cannot uh, accept their writing we have non christian writers from the first century and first and second century i have in the presentation you can see that uh, uh, flavius josephus he uh, 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 born like immediately after uh, jesus christ was crucified in ad uh, 37 uh, we we know that in, uh, jesus christ was crucified around ad 30 or 33 and a few years later less than it occurred uh flavius josephus was born and uh, he was a jewish historian he was he was not a christian he was not uh, attracted by the teachings of uh, jesus christ he was a practicing jew he was a scribe and he was a, a historian and he wrote about uh, uh, jesus christ and in his book named antiquities of the jews uh uh, uh, uh i think which it is uh, written in ad uh, close to an ad 90 he wrote that and uh, in that book uh, we can clearly see uh, that jesus christ is mentioned and uh, the uh, uh, what is written about jesus christ the brother of jesus who was called christ whose uh, whose name was james so in this book antiquities of uh, uh, jews uh, josephus was writing about james and in order to introduce james josephus was saying that james was a brother of jesus who was called christ so that's a clear mention about uh, jesus christ from a non christian historian the second person we can see from the uh, uh, first century is uh, tacitus and he was he was not even a jew he was a roman historian he was a roman historian and in his work annals we can uh, read about uh, uh, crucifixion of jesus christ it's not even just about uh, just the name he uh, very clearly tacitus wrote that uh, uh, jesus christ was uh, uh, crucified by uh, pilate so uh, we have uh, plenty of there are a lot more uh, writings uh, uh, in from the second century and all but these are the uh, uh, writings uh, the historical evidence from the uh, first century itself so we have at least six historians from the uh, uh, first century wrote about jesus christ and if we compare it with other historical persons sometimes uh, some of the kings or historical persons Uh, we can find uh, the writings about them after many centuries after their life the early available writing about or early available evidence about some of these historical persons are uh, after many centuries of their lifetime but here uh, immediately after the life of jesus christ in the same century there are historical writings historical evidence of jesus christ so if anybody who reject all this work all the four gospels uh, the writings of josephus and tacitus then uh, we have to tell that we have to completely forget uh, history if they cannot accept this evidence we will not be able to accept any history so we have more evidence than any other historical a uh, person so uh, jesus christ is a historic person now okay we understand that uh, christmas is the celebration of birthday of jesus christ and we understood that he is a historic person but what does it mean to me he is a historic person but uh, oh, uh, what is the uniqueness of him he might be just like any other person we have a lot of kings a lot of philosophers aristotle plato uh, alexander uh, king alexander and uh, 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 the pilate or pharaohs uh, we have so many historic persons what is the uh, thing which make the birth of jesus christ unique we have a couple of uh, uh, things to uh, think about the first thing <coughs> is the birth uh, the uniqueness of the birth of jesus christ is his virgin birth as we read in matthew chapter 1 verse 23 behold the virgin shall be with a child and shall bear a son and they shall call him his name emmanuel which is translated uh, god with us so here it says that a virgin shall be with a child and shall bear a son so 
uh, we know that uh, it's not like our birth. We know that all of us, we are born from a father and a mother. But when we think about Jesus Christ, he is born from a woman. There was no uh, uh, male person involved in the birth of Jesus Christ. Only uh, in the history, Jesus Christ is the only one who was born like that. There is a similar person who has a unique birth, that is Adam. Adam doesn't have father or mother. Adam was created by God. God created Adam in the beginning. That's what we read in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1 and 2. God created Adam. He didn't have a uh, father or mother. But when we uh, think about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is born of a virgin. That's one of the first uniqueness of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. The second thing, the fulfillment of prophecies about Jesus Christ. There are hundreds of prophecies regarding the birth of Jesus Christ. Hundreds of prophecies. Sometimes in uh, history and in the folk tale and all, we can see uh, some people, uh, there are uh, uh, prophecies about some people. But when we think about Jesus Christ, there are hundreds of prophecies. And there are very, uh, when we think about the other prophecies, other people, it's like just a, a vague general prophecy. And they try to attribute that prophecy to the, the, that particular person. But when we think about Jesus Christ, the prophecies are very specific. Very specific. One of the prophecies uh, about the forerunner. As I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, John the Baptist is known as the, uh, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And it is very clearly mentioned about who would be John, uh, John the Baptist, what would be his nature. Everything was written much before his birth. The, uh, the nature of his birth, we just mentioned about uh, the virgin birth. He, his birth uh, the, the nature of his birth, he uh, would have a virgin birth. It is prophesied much before, centuries before his birth. His birthplace, we know that he was born in Bethlehem. And that place, even the name is clearly prophesied. So if we uh, look into the life of uh, Jesus Christ, from uh, the Old Testament, we, have, uh, we can see hundreds of prophecies that is that cannot be found in any other person uh, in the history of the world. The, uh, the next uh, 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 significance of the birth of Jesus Christ, he was born as a king. He was born as a king. In the history, you cannot even find one person, not even one person who was, find as, uh, who was born as a uh, king. I am born as an Indian. We have different nationalities. Uh, uh, we have different races. Some of us are uh, born uh, as Asian. Some of us are uh, born as uh, African American. Some of us are uh, born as uh, as Caucasian. But not even one person in the history is born as a king. There are so many young kings in the history. Very young king at the age of uh, like uh, uh, in the uh, biblical history, the youngest king is Jehoash. He became a king when he was seven years old. And the youngest king in the uh, history of world, his name is King Oyo. He was in Uganda. He became a king at the age of three. So that's the youngest uh, king uh, uh, in the history of the world. But when we think about Jesus Christ, he, he was born as a king. Not even one person other than Jesus Christ was born as a king. That's another significance of his uh, birth. Then, uh, when we think about uh, all these things, uh, it's not really about uh, the uniqueness of his birth, but something related to that. When we think about uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, the peculiarity of Jesus, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, and uh, the celebration, the Christmas on December 25th, uh, many people would ask, especially uh, when we are dealing with uh, uh, skeptics or people who don't accept Jesus Christ as a God, uh, uh, they ask, 
if jesus christ was born on ad 1st or bc 4 whatever uh, there is a conflict in that uh, opinion of whether it was on ad 1st or bc 4 uh, no matter what it is in the beginning of the, uh, uh, or ad 1st there were uh, there were questions like uh, is there no god before that if god jesus christ is born on ad 1st is there no god before that but we read that in micah chapter 5 verse 2 again here uh, this is another verse about uh, the uh, the the place the prophecy about the place of uh, jesus christ uh, the birth of jesus christ but you o bethlehem ephrath who are too little to be among the clans of judah from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler of israel whose coming forth is from the old from ancient days so it, it is very clear from this verse it's not on uh, ad first jesus christ came into existence he is from he is coming forth from the old from ancient days jesus christ is god from the beginning the christmas represents only the incarnation of jesus christ to this earth even before he was incarnated on this earth he was there and he was a god and he is still a god and he will be god forever there is no change in uh, his deity he is god forever so before jesus christ was born on this earth before he incarnated on this earth he was there when uh, Bible start with the word in the beginning, from that beginning, in the beginning itself, Jesus Christ was there. But uh, Christmas only represents his incarnation on this earth, his coming on this earth. So the next question, okay, we mentioned about the historicity of Jesus Christ, and we mentioned about uh, whether Jesus Christ is a uh, 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 the peculiarity of his uh, birth, he was born, uh, his birth was a uh, virgin birth, uh, he was born as a king. So, um, wh why do we discuss all these things? Why did he even come to uh, uh, earth? We told that uh, he was there from the beginning, Christmas only represents his uh, uh, coming to this earth. The question is, what was the purpose of his birth? Why did he came down to this earth? The, cost, the answer is he came to this earth to save us. The purpose of his coming is to save us. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, it says that she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. He came to save us and from what he is going to save us? He is going to save us from our sins. So the purpose of coming of Jesus Christ or the purpose of birth of Jesus Christ is that he is a savior. He came to save us from our sins. And that purpose makes his birth significant in my life, significant in each one of our life. If he just came like any other person, any other king, or any other great person, and he, if he just lived here for some time and died, doesn't have any significance in my life. But because Jesus Christ came to this earth to save us from our sins, his birth has a significant uh, significance in my life. Why do we need a salvation? He said that he came to save us from our sins. But why do we need a salvation? Because Bible says that all are sinners. There is no difference. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says that there is no difference. Everyone is a sinner. Everyone is a sinner. And in Romans 6 verse 23, it says that the wages of sin is death. There is a consequence for the sins. Any sin man uh, commit, uh, let it be a big sin or a small sin, no matter what is the intensity of the sin, the, uh, the con there is a consequence for the sins we commit. And because there is a sin, 
uh, there is a consequence and that consequence is the eternal death we needed a savior we needed a savior when romans 3 verse 23 says that all are sinners i am also included in that when it says all that means all there is no exception in that there is uh, 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 there are no exception that some people are righteous people and holy people all means all me you and everyone in this world they are sinners and that consequence of sin would be death and all of us were supposed to be that that's why we need salvation that's why we need a savior now the question is okay we need a savior we need a salvation from the sins then why can't god just say that why can't god just uh, 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 declare that okay you are saved we read that in genesis chapter 1 god created everything just by saying let it be let there be water that let, let there be light and everything came into existence if god could create everything just by saying that let it be why can't he say that let there be salvation but we need to understand one thing god is a loving god because god is a loving god he didn't want us to perish he didn't want us to go through that judgment and at the same time god is a righteous god he is very righteous his the standard of righteous is beyond our level of understanding and because he is a righteous god he cannot leave sin unpunished if he leave sin unpunished then he is not righteous anymore he indirectly he is supporting sin indirectly he is supporting evil so he is not righteous anymore so god is loving and god is uh, righteous so uh, he wanted uh, he wanted to save us at the same time he cannot uh, the uh, leave sin, uh, sin unpunished so he decided to take that punishment from us and he decided to take that punishment by himself and he decided to uh, die instead of us and that's the reason jesus christ came to this earth when uh, in hebrews 2 verse uh, uh, 14 we see that he came to die for us he came to die instead of us and jesus would not be able to die unless he became a man because god is uh, uh, almighty god is spirit and uh, being in that level he would not be able to die so in order to take the punishment from us in order to take that punishment from me and you in order to die instead of me and you he became a man so that is the significance of his birth he came to die for you and me he took birth for uh uh dying instead of you and me so jesus christ came to the earth to die and he died on the cross of calvary instead of you and me he took that punishment so what is my responsibility what should i do the answer is we should know you should be a follower of jesus christ we should be a follower of jesus christ john chapter 3 verse 16 it says that believe in jesus christ if you believe in jesus christ you will get eternal life that's what john 316 says that and there are a lot of other things associated with it and john 1 verse 12 it says that if you believe in jesus christ you will be the children of god you will be the children of god there are a lot of other a lot more things but the basic thing is we need to believe in jesus christ and how how do we believe in jesus christ roman chapter 10 verse 9 it says that if you declare with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that you, god raised him from the dead you will be saved so we are supposed to believe in god believe in jesus christ and we need to accept that he raised him uh, from the de- uh, dead and we need to declare that jesus is lord he is my master that's 
uh, something we need to do the second thing we need to do is we need to walk in obedience once we make that commitment once we uh, publicly accept with our mouth that jesus is lord and we believe in him the second portion uh, or uh, the next part is we need to walk in obedience in john 14 verse 23 it says that jesus replied anyone who loves me will obey my teaching so we just uh, saw that jesus christ came from heaven to this earth to die for us to die instead of us to save us from uh, our sins to save us from the consequence of sin the punishment of sin from death so he gave his life for us how can we not love him how can we not love him and jesus himself told if you love me i have done so much for you i have given myself for you and if you love me you will obey my teaching you will obey my teaching we need to obey his teaching and his teaching will help us to be holy in ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 it says that we are chosen by god to be holy and blameless to be holy and blameless so if we obey the teachings of god we can be holy and blameless and in first thessalonians we read that the will of god for us is our sanctification sanctification means purification so god wants to purify us god wants to uh, 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 remove all the filthiness all the evil all the malice from us and he wants to purify us and he wants us to be holy and blameless and he wants us to share his holiness and what do we need to do for that we need to walk in obedience we need to obey jesus christ so these are two things we need to do the first thing we need to accept jesus christ we need to be a christian christian that means a follower of christ and we need to walk in obedience so that god will be able to uh, sanctify purify us so this is my short uh, uh, message on this god came to this earth and that day we celebrate as christmas and he came so that we will have freedom from punishment we will have freedom from sin so if you have really accepted jesus christ like that if you uh, really walk in obedience then we can say that we can tell each other merry christmas because if you have in done that if you have in accepted jesus christ then this christmas does not have any significance in your life but if you accept if you have accepted jesus christ christmas has a significance in our life christmas is something remind us uh the wonderful things god has done in our life christmas uh remind us that we are free from sin and its consequence then we can truly say each other merry christmas so i am telling you merry christmas and god bless you thank you